Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last video, we started off a mini series called uh, building a profile application. And in that video, I showed you the application, you know, how it looks like when we finish building it. And I gave you some work through about the technologies that I've been using and how the communication happened between the front end and the back end in a secure manner and so on. And I'll put a link up here as well. So you guys can refer, refer that as well. So today we are going to start building that. And by the way, guys, this whole code is available on GitHub. So if you visit this repository, you can find the full project code. So you can go through it if you like. So you guys have this uh, GitHub repository as well as this video series. And apart from that, I want to give you more. I have created a blog post as well with regard to this profile app. So you guys can easily copy paste the code here, you see. And of course, I will demonstrate how to do that today. So let's just jump in and I will share this all resource link and everything in the description of this video. Okay. And I have opened a terminal and let's create a directory profile app. Okay. And I will CD into profile app. So step one. So I have added these stepwise instructions. So step one is to create an Angular application. So you can just copy the code here and paste it in and hit enter and here in the blog says accept routing and scss so you have to accept routing and choose scs here okay it's done so it says you know cd into the profile app so i will just cd in and i will open it in visual studio code all right so i will take an integrated terminal and let's follow along so first let's create two components for login page and the profile landing page so you can easily use nggc or ng generate component command in angular so nggc auth and nggc profile copy paste very easy so those components are now created in the app folder you see here and let's move on to the step two now it's time to add amplify so in order to do that you guys first have to add the amplify or install amplify globally amplify cli and do amplify configure i have already done that if you haven't done this use these two commands and get it done and once it is installed you have to install uh, amplify locally as well so just copy the command here clear the screen paste it hit enter and you have to install amplify angular library which will give you some additional helper functions and components ui components okay so let's install the amplify angular as well paste it wait for it okay step two is done so let's move on to the step three now we need to add some configurations or some polyfills or some workaround when you're working with angular otherwise there will be some issues or errors you will encounter that will frustrate you so here just copy this command or just both two lines of this code and you have to go to source polyfill.ts since i'm in visual studio code i will hit ctrl p and type uh, polyfill.ts so this is the file it says okay add it on top of the this particular file just paste it and save it very easy and also now it says go to index.html so again ctrl p index.html and within the header tag you see header tag you have to add this script tag so that is a reference of the window object to the global variable since global is no longer there in angular 6 okay now there's one more thing you have to go to tsconfig.app.json here this one and there you have to add the type node all right so step three is done. Step four, what do you have to do? At this point, we can initialize the Amplify project using Amplify CLI. So take a terminal or integrated terminal in this case and type Amplify in it. Copy it if you want. And I have given you all the answers that you have to provide for these prompts, right? Just accept the default profile app for the name and the environment since the new versions of amplify allow you to publish to multiple environment you can just choose whatever the environment you want i in this case selected dev or i type dev 
and the code delta vs code javascript angular src dist slash profile app accept the default ng serve and do you want to use aws profile yes and here you have to choose your aws profile in my case it is youtube in your case it may be default or any name that you have given okay it's done so at this point we have created two components and added or initialized the amplify library so now we can add different categories in amplify so what are those categories we are going to add it is auth and api so how to add auth simply copy paste the code here amplify add auth and the default answer for the prompt is yes use default configuration hit enter okay it's done clear the screen and now let's add the amplify add api hit enter and here you're going to have to select graphql you see hit enter provide api just accept the default and here select amazon cognito user pool do i have annotated uh, graphql schema no i don't have one do you want guided one yes and select single object fields with to do do you want to edit the schema right now yes okay now as you can see it has opened the schema.graphql file so according to the uh, blog post we have to replace this file or the replace this model with our user model because we are going to save users information so user has a username first name last name bio or some description about himself and the image url so that's the model that we are going to have so you already know that when you create a model attribute here it will create a dynamodb table and add these attributes as well so save this and now get back to your integrated terminal hit enter to continue all right so now it says since we have configured everything locally now we need to do amplify push to create all those backend services in aws so amplify push then it's going to ask you a series of questions do you want to continue yep okay do you want to generate code for your newly created graphql api yes choose angular here and accept the default do you want to generate all update operations like queries mutation subscription yes enter the maximum statement depth 2 is fine accept the default by the way you can like see all these answers in the blog post itself right so now it started provisioning resources in the cloud so it's going to take few minutes so be patient all right so it's done so once this is completed amplify will create a file called aws export.js you see this one and it will contains all your configuration related to all the resources that it provision user pools and graphql endpoint etc right now we need to refer this configuration file in our main.ts file and use or initialize amplify and enable our front end to talk to the back end services so in order to do that here are the commands that you have to type basically so go to main.ts file and main.ts here you go i have to import these two libraries so oh, it's not one is a library and the other one is our export.js configuration file so after that you have to configure it using amplify.configure so that's it now if you can remember we have installed this amplify angular library so in order to make use of those higher order component like the fully blown logging page etc you have to import that as well so you need to go to app.module.ts so app.module.ts and do this import which will import the amplify angular library and that will bring you the amplify angular module where you will put it inside the imports array and amplify service where you will put it inside the providers array and you will have that as a singleton throughout your application now we can use this amplify authenticator but before that we have to add routing as you can remember we have added two modules 
one for auth and one for profile so my idea is if the user is not logged in it will always render the auth page or the auth component where it will have the login page and once he is successfully logged in only he will be access to the profile page right so let's add those routes so in order to do that you have to go to app dot routing dot module dot ts one and to the routes array just copy this code and so this is the empty array right now just replace that so when you replace that these two components are not yet brought in so just try typing that and you will get suggestions from vs code and when you pick one and hit enter it will be automatically imported awesome so here as well auth component hit enter it will be automatically imported all right so that step is already done and let's go to step six so there is nothing but adding the higher order component amplify authenticator to auth component.html so if you go to your folder structure and go to auth component html right now it's this take it out and paste it in so before running the application to check this one you have to add the css for this login screen as well so that is also provided with the library itself called theme.css file so you just have to go to style.css right which is here this one and on top of the file just import amplify angular theme.css now we need to do one other thing before testing that you should go to app component.html here because we have some default content to remove so go to app dot component dot html so this is the content i've been talking about so these are just default content i need only the route outlet that's it so that's all i want in the app component.html okay now we can run ng serve and check this shall you do that ng serve according to the blog i should see the logging screen okay so i will take a new tab and go to local host 4200 hit enter there you go i have it beautiful and check whether i have any errors no console is clean so we were at step six it is finished now let's go to the step seven so in this step seven we are going to add md bootstrap now our login page it already imported some styles right we don't have to worry about that but when designing or when implementing our profile component we have to have some styles so md bootstrap is quite good ui component library i would say so let's use that or you guys can use anything else if you like so in my case i'm using it so just copy and install angular bootstrap dash md library and you're going to have to install the rest of other dependent libraries as well this one so let's wait until this is finished as soon as it's done we'll install this one as well and paste and hit enter so it will install chartjs fontosum and hammerjs so after that we have to add that module to our app com app uh, module.ts so so go to this file and import the md bootstrap module from the library import that and put this in the imports area here so another step is to add or replace the styles and scripts array in the angular.json file so then all these styles and scripts will be available to our application so let's type control p and angular.json here you go and if you scroll down a little bit you should see there is this two objects styles it's an array basically and script is another another array so here i have to just replace both of these with these imports or references rather i will just paste in everything what is there in the blog so that will import all the fontosum and bootstrap md bootstrap css as well as those javascript file for charges and hammerjs so done so step seven is done so this is step eight now let's edit the profile component so let's go to uh, 
profile component.html right now we just have this default text so here let me just open it up a little bit so you have to add the navigation bar and the main content or the body part right so let's add the navigation header first just copy this code and come here paste this in so that will add the navigation save that and do ng serve all right so uh, now you go back here and refresh the login page login there's no issues and if you go to profile i should see the navigation bar there you go and there are no any errors in the console so let's continue so header is added now let's add the main content just copy this whole bunch of code copy and here under the header tag paste this in so let's see what is this so it's basically form of the profile so we have to have some kind of a form to get the information from the user where we will grab his first name last name about him and then we will have a button called update to update his profile information in the blog it says in the form we are binding data to a model called user so we're gonna have to create that user class because if you notice here for all our fields in the form so this is the form see this is our form we have a data binding going on here and it bind the first name values to user dot first name last name values to user dot last name and user dot above me right so we have to create this user model in order to do that binding between the form so how to do that terminal open and add a new typescript class with ngg class user so it created the type Chris class user dot ts so it's just nothing but a small typescript class without any content so to the content you have to replace it with our attributes so let me replace it here so i have id username first name last name about me and we're going to have an image url as well that i'll cover in the next part since we are binding with ng model we have to import this forms module otherwise it's not going to work and it's going to give me an error so go to app.module.ts and as it says just import this up here get the forms module and add it to the import array comma and add that so let's do ng serve and see if our form is working fine or at least the ui part is working fine because we haven't yet added the implementation now come here and uh, refresh and here's my form where i can type in about me and if i expand it you should see the whole form which is responsive thanks to md bootstrap so let's follow along so now that we have the ui part let's add the functionality in the component.ts file of profile let's go to profile component.ts file and it says okay just copy paste the whole thing okay so let's see what happens here so in the profile html or in the ui here we have few functions now we have at, at the moment it's only one function so that is basically update the profile so when someone click update profile it should take all this first name last name and the information about himself and do a mutation and create that record in the DynamoDB table we just created earlier so we should have that handler so this is that handler update profile handler so let's see what it does so it first forms this user object so the user object is consisted of the id username first name last name and bio because if you can remember our graphql model has those attributes go to amplify and go to backend api and here you have the schema.graphql so these are the attributes that we are going to fill in now, i'm not adding this image one as you can see it is not a required attribute only id and username is required you have this bang sign here and other attributes are not required these are not required right but i am adding first name last name and bio image url we will come back to that when we are doing the second part of this 
So I grab those information from this dot user, which is our user class we just import up here. And we are creating a new instance of user here. And in ng on init, we are calling our auth API. So auth API is nothing but our amplify auth API. And we are getting the current authenticated users context. Now guys, although right now we can directly go to profile page we will be adding some auth guards and with that we can deny users going into the profile page if they haven't logged in so if someone is here in the profile page it guarantees that that user is logged in so what happens is it gets the current context of the authenticated user and set up his id user id and the username here so that username is displayed on the navigation bar if i go to the profile html onto the header section navigation bar hello username see so guys now let's check this out so i will go to the profile app i have to go to auth to get the login screen and let me take an inspect element and take and console i have to create a new account Okay, when I create a new account and sign in, I get to this screen, right? Right now, I have to manually go to profile page. And as you can see, it grabbed the username. Hello, MJSON. Now, if I just type in some name and update it, I get the 200 result. So it is successfully updated. And I can further verify that if I go to AWS console. And I have a table called user and some string. And there I have the record I just added. Manoj Fernando and whatever the description I just added, right? So everything gets persisted. Beautiful. So guys, if you come back to the blog post, we are done with the first part of the profile application. So in the second part of this uh, profile application, we are going to load the saved user data, right? And then we are going to add the ability to upload a profile picture securely as I have demonstrated in the first video. And then we are going to set up some auth guards not allowing an unauthorized user to go to the profile component. And also we are going to add automatic redirection to the profile page after a successful login. So I hope this has been useful to you. And I'll share all this link with you guys and thank you very much. Let's <laughs> go.